Vendor news. Lots of cool things happening in the community. A brand new terrain challenge. And a brand new channel champ. Bald 8 Bill shows us how to make some more trees. And terrain shows us how to make a rock. Wait, can't you just pick those up? And hang around after the credits for some laughs. Mantic has released a lot of quirky goodness over the past month. Garlax Monsters Fort is a hundred or four minis worth of new minis. This great deal is available for pre-order and will ship in June. With the recent releases of Abyssal Dwarves and Orcs, the Undead now have plenty of friends to beat up on those next Dwarves and Elves. Mantic has also released the beta of the Orc Army List. As always, all the army lists and the Kings of War rules are free to download. Make sure you download the free rules and army lists and give this great game a try. What have you got to lose? Game Stay and Golden Demon 2011 is right around the corner. July 30th is the big day, so be sure to make your travel plans to Chicago now. May 27th is the North American Display Board Weekend. Bring your army and display board to one of the North American GW Hobby Centers and enter the competition. The winner from each hobby center will move on to represent their community at Games Day where the ultimate Armies on Parade champion will be chosen. The 2011-2012 Tournament Circuit starts June 1st. Get in on the action and earn your way to the Throne of Souls Championship. It's Tomb King's launch weekend. There's a new army book and lots of new models to get excited about. Head over to the GW website and check out these amazing minis. Recently, Ren Zero put up a video about some books that the real Mithril had sent him that she made. And so I went back and looked at the original video again that the real Mithril did on, on the tutorial on how to make these books and it's just absolutely amazing. It's so dead simple. It's a, one of those why didn't I think about that moments. So you definitely need to check this video out. Arbor Noctua did a great little video on some space saving tips for your work area. Uh, I know mine gets really crowded and it's hard to paint minis when you don't have any space to put your paints in your paintbrush. Go check this video out. It's got some great little tips. All of us like to save money. HQ Bunker recently did a video on how to use cheap and recycled stuff to build terrain. It's a great video, it's got a lot of great tips, so make sure you check this out. Our buddy Carlo at Let's Cut Foam did a great series on how to disassemble and repair handheld wire cutters. If you've got a wire cutter and it's broken down, you should definitely check out this series. Jedi Jim 252 sent me a link to a video that I thought was really, really cool. Uh, it's on a channel called Mr. Drumtastic, and it was a video of a Roman fort that this guy is starting to build. And I'm telling you, this fort is absolutely fantastic. The layout is great, the detail is, is awesome. Um, I haven't seen the finished product yet, but what he's got so far is just fantastic. The rest of the videos on his channel are good too, so make sure you go check that channel out. Minutes on the Sun finally popped back up with a great couple of videos on some scratch builds that he's done. And I have to say that when I saw his fingers next to those, those builds that he did and, and got a sense of how small those things are and the amount of detail he put in them, I had to pick my jaw up off the floor. Absolutely fantastic. Make sure to check those out. War Child 40K did a great two-part series on putting together LEDs and fiber optic cable to bring some light to your pieces. So it's, it's very easy to follow, and he does a great job of explaining how to set this up. So if you're wondering how to do LED lighting or fiber optics, go check out these videos. Our buddy Ghost over at Lincoln Heart 666 put up some videos. He was doing a 12 tanks in 12 months series, 
and the first tank he's done has some absolutely beautiful freehand work on it. Make sure to check this video out if you want to see some beautiful freehand. Dream Spirit War did a great tutorial on making snow for your terrain. If you've been wanting to do some snow based terrain, you definitely want to check this video out. It's excellent, it's easy to follow. We're going to try something new with this episode of the Bitbox. What I've done is I've set up a playlist on my channel called Bitbox Episode 5, and all the videos I've mentioned here today are in that playlist. I'm hoping that'll make it easier for you guys to find them, link to them, and watch them. And one final thing on the community. I want to give a special shout out to somebody. Now, this is a person who doesn't really upload gaming videos. Uh, they have a YouTube channel, but they, they are an important member of the community. This person has been uh, a, a great commenter on a lot of my videos, very encouraging, and that kind of feedback really helps in the community. So even if you don't post videos, it's, you're still important when you interact. And so this person is JRiv193. He was my very first subscriber. So you guys do me a favor, drop by his channel and give him a high five for me. I know it's been a long time since the Bitbox has been up, but when the last Bitbox episode aired, uh, I issued a terrain challenge. And one of the things I said is, when you submit your video response, I'm going to show it in the next uh, episode of the Bitbox. So here they are. This episode of the Bitbox, I'm issuing you a new terrain challenge. I want you to build a rock altar. Now remember, this is a challenge, not a competition. Nobody's going to win any prizes. Uh, the only thing you really win is a great sense of accomplishment and a stretching of your skills. Here are the guidelines for this. What I'm looking for is an altar built out of rock. Not a wooden altar with a rock on it. An altar built out of rock. Try to keep the base no bigger than 6 by 6 inches, that's about 15 centimeters. Uh, I don't care what you make the base out of, I don't care what materials you use for, for making this piece. Uh, you can put carvings or paintings or anything on the rock, that's fine. Um, and really, since this is not a competition, uh, if you have an idea for a rock altar and it doesn't quite fit in the guidelines I've put in there, uh, break the guidelines. I mean, really, there's not going to be any DQs unless it's, you know, not a rock altar. I mean, don't send a car. It needs to be a rock altar, but, you know, don't feel bad about breaking the guidelines. Episode 6 of the Bitbox won't be up in two weeks. It'll be up in three weeks because in two weeks I'm going to be in Baltimore. So you guys have until May 25th to submit your final entry for the challenge as a video response to episode 5 of the Bitbox, this video that you're watching right now. Please try to limit your video of your submission to no longer than one minute. You can put as many videos up of you building this as you want, but I'd like your final submission to be a video no longer than one minute. It takes me a very long time to download these and edit them together, so the shorter you make it for me, the better. <laughs> I'm going to show you another way to make a tree um, for basically any season that you want other than winter. Um, you take your the uh, pillow stuffener that you can get at Walmart and um, sp spread it apart like this right here. Um, paint it spray paint it green. Um, also paint it the trunk right here rust brown 
like the uh, primer brown I mean and what you do <clears throat> is you take the adhesive go on the top side you can also use um, hairspray too and just sprinkle over it on the top side shake it all I can add a little bit more to it spray it again I want to get a little bit thicker on that side like that <clears throat> You see how she looks. Now the under underside, I'm gonna go with a little bit darker texture. And there's the top side. I got a little, a little bit more there, so before I show you, so I'm gonna spray paint that. So I can actually use spray. I can actually use um hairspray too. And there it is. We'll also take care of it too. <clears throat> And as you see, there's a tree. The underside, I used a darker green. I can touch up a little bit more here too with the darker green. <clears throat> but um, when it's all said and done, of course it won't look good on your snow. But when you plant it in there, bam, you got a tree. And it's just a regular branch that you can find out in the backyard, y'all. Quick, easy way to make a tree. Nothing better than a good rock on your gaming table. So we're going to take a look at how to make a nice rock and keep it simple. So we're going to start with, I've got some uh, one-inch pink foam here. Thank you, Carlo. Uh, I've got a piece of just matte board, the stuff you use to frame pictures with. It's basically a real thick, very dense cardboard. Just cut it out and beveled the edges down uh, for the base. And a knife. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide how tall we want our rock. And I'll say, let's make it this tall. We'll make a nice tall one. And we're just going to slice through this. And the rest is simple. Just cut away anything that doesn't look like a rock. So I usually just start by kind of shaping, rounding off the top a bit, making angled cuts. Nothing very spectacular. What you don't really want, well, what I don't really want, is a lot of uh, sharp corners and angles. Uh, not too many anyway, so we're going to kind of just shape this thing up. And all it is is just a bunch of cuts like this, and I just keep cutting until I think it looks the way I want it to look. Alright, so now we've got a basic rock shape. Um, it'll just stand like that. Now I'm going to start putting a little bit of detail in that. So what I do is I'll cut in and just kind of whack out a slice there. Now you don't want to do a lot of exactly the same slices and you want to angle them a little bit. And be careful with the knife because you don't want to put too much pressure on the knife and have it break on you. And I'll make some smaller ones. And I'll go in with the tip and just 
knock a few notches in there, just pull some out. You can do things like this just to get some texture on this rock. All right, so now that I've got the basic shape here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some real fine sandpaper. This is some 320 grit and just lightly kind of go around the edges just to kind of wear it down a little bit. All right, so we've got our basic rock here. Um, it looks looks pretty decent, I think. So what I'm going to do now is attach to the base. I'm just going to take some white glue, put a bit on the on the bottom here. You don't need a ton of glue. Just cover it over. Make sure you get to the edges. And then move it around a little on the base. The next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of texture to the base. So I'm going to just glue up the base here. And then I'm going to take some of my um, rock sand mixture. Uh, if you don't know what this is, I showed you how to make this in an earlier episode of the Bitbox, so go check that out. But we're just going to, this one's small enough, I can just kind of dip it in here and move it around um, and get this stuff all over the base. So next, I've got some sifted rock here that's a little bigger. So what I'm going to do is just put a few of these bigger stones around. Uh, just pick some spots I think look good. Just put dabs of glue there. Alright, we'll hand pick some rocks out of here and just kind of stick them on. Some of the bigger ones. We're just trying to get some variation in the base. Uh, we don't want it to look too uniform. That wouldn't look natural. Alright, there we go. So this is what we've got so far. Now what you want to do is you want to allow at least a few hours for this glue to dry very thoroughly before we go into the next spot. So the glue's dry now, um, or dry enough for me anyway. So what I'm going to do is just lightly rub my finger across just to get off any little rocks and stuff that aren't stuck down because I don't want those coming off later. I'm not rubbing real hard, I'm just kind of lightly getting it off and turn it upside down and tap it. Now what we're going to do is goop it. Um, so real simple, I've just got uh, some white glue, some water, some black paint, and a little bit of plaster in here. I will put uh, two coats of this stuff on, letting it dry thoroughly in between. And then we'll be back to uh, paint this and flock it and finish it up. All right, so the goop is dry. Um, and now what you'll notice when the, when the goop dries is if you've got any deep recesses in here, um, there will still be some pink exposed. So, and that, that usually happens, that's okay. What I do to fix that is I just black wash it. Now I've just got some basic black paint here that's thinned down really good with uh, distilled water and I put some flow improver in it just to help it get down in the cracks. So we're just going to slop this on here and make sure this stuff gets down and covers the pink up. Uh, and then we'll let that dry and we'll be back. Alright, the black wash is dry, so I've gotten rid of all the pink bits here. Uh, so we're completely covered. So now what I'm going to do is the first highlight layer. We're basically going to do an overbrush of uh, a dark gray. So I've just got dark gray here. Uh, and it's dry brushing, we don't mix any water in, but we actually use quite a bit of paint, so it's more an overbrush where we're going to get almost everything except the very deepest recesses in gray. Anyway, I wipe a little bit of paint off, but not much, and then you apply it just the same as a dry brush, but it's going to go on a lot heavier, so basically only your very deepest uh, areas are going to still be black just got a medium brown here uh, mixed about 50 50 with water and I'm just gonna paint the bottom um, it's okay if some deep recesses stay black but basically we want this all base coated and brown um, so nothing spectacular or amazing or complicated just put some brown on 
All right, our first layers are dry here. Uh, you can see this is already starting to look fairly rockish, uh, but we're going to do a couple more highlight coats on this and uh, just bring out the detail. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do kind of a heavy dry brush with this color that's just gray. It's just a lighter gray. Uh, you can see it here. And so I'm going to do, I'm just using a soft bristle round brush and I'm going to wipe most of the paint off. I'm not even going to go to a paper towel with this layer because it's going to be a fairly heavy dry brush. I'm just going to kind of dab it off on my palette um, and then just whack it on there. Alright, so that dry brush layer is on and while I'm waiting for it to dry I'm going to go ahead and dry brush a layer on the ground here. Uh, what I'm using is a color called Golden Brown. It's just a lighter brown. Um, so you can see it right here. And basically the same thing as the rock. Kind of a heavy dry brush. Um, just go into the palette to wipe enough off because uh, I want it to be fairly heavy and just going to get it on there. Alright, so our last dry brush layers for the gray dry brush, I've basically just took that last gray we had and mixed about uh, half as much white in there. So it's about half the gray, half the white. Uh, and I'm just going to do a very light dry brush with this. So I'm actually going to go to a paper towel and wipe off most of the color because I just want to kind of highlight the edges and I don't want to get a lot on there. So I go very, very light and try to barely touch the piece with very little paint. Okay, so I got that highlight on and what I've decided before we go to the ground, what I've decided after looking at this is that I want to add one more highlight layer. I want to do just a pure white and just barely touch just like the edges of these cracks and the you know the corners and stuff. Uh, so I changed my mind a little bit, and you are absolutely allowed to do that when you're working on a piece of art. So, uh, just basically, I've just got some pure white in here. I'm going to wipe almost all of it off the brush, and I am just going to very, very lightly kind of tag the corners, um, just, to, just to bring those out a little bit. Alright, so a little bit of white highlights and just just kind of made things pop a little more. Alright, so now what we're going to do on the on the ground is one more light highlight. I've got this color called Fawn, which is basically a tan. Um, so I'm going to do the same kind of uh, light highlighting that we did on the uh, on the rock. Get most of the paint off the brush and just go over lightly over the tops here uh, just to bring out the tops. And then that will be it for the painting. All right, I've got the the last of the highlighting done. Uh, I've gone outside and sprayed a coat of matte varnish on this just to protect the paintwork. So now all we really have to do is uh, flock this and we'll be done. So what I've got here is just some uh, bright green flock, just regular um, regular standard flock. And what we're going to do, we're just going to put a little bit of that on for moss. So I'm going to use a glue brush, and I don't want to dab the glue directly onto the rock because it'll be too much glue. I just want very small amounts of this stuff in there just to color the rock a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of dab a little bit of glue on some of these uh, edges where some moss might collect. And then what we'll do, just take a little bit of this green flock and sprinkle it on there. Knock the excess off. And this is really, um, you don't want a lot in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just put a little bit of static grass on the, on the base. So I'm just going to pick a few spots. Okay, so I've just got some random glue spots all over. Now what I'll generally do with these 
I'll actually take a glue brush and just kind of tamp them down a little bit otherwise your static grass ends up kind of sitting up on a lump uh, now the way I put the static grass on I don't have a, a static grass applicator thingy uh, I just take a big chunk of the static grass and see if I can show this to you um, just poke it in there jab it in the glue and lift it up that'll help it stand up then turn the thing upside down and tap it uh, and that'll get the the static grass standing up pretty good so there's the finished product uh, very simple to do um, there was probably about 15 minutes of actual sit down work time on this the rest was just dry time okay Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time. So here's the great JoJo Man's channel, titled Enter the Wolf Time. I will let you guess which faction he's a fan of. Uh, and there he is, wearing his wolf mask, as always. Lots of fun stuff on this channel. You can tell he's very animated when he talks. Uh, it's great fun to watch. As you can see here, uh, Jojo Man does really good green stuff conversions, green stuff work. Uh, he's got a whole host of videos on green stuffing that he's done. Definitely want to check those out also he's a really really good painter so his channel has a lot of different stuff going on um, it's got a lot of great inspiration so it's definitely worth watching and another great contribution to the community of the great Jojo man is that we finally have a name for this little area the doobly-doo so thanks man so thanks great Jojo man for being a part of the community you're really bringing a lot to the table, and I appreciate you being here. And guys, if you haven't checked out his channel, go by and subscribe right now. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Wowie. Uh. A brand new train check. Come on. A brand new train. A, a brand <laughs> new train. So thanks, great JoJo man, for being a part of the community and. Community? Community. Okay. And a brand new channel champ. I'm sorry, I bounced again, didn't I? Um. <laughs> we'll get it. There's a new army book up and lock. It's Tomb King's Long Weekend. <laughs> and give these great games a Mantic has released a lot, a lot, I can't do it. Head over to G, the D, D, G. <laughs> Search June 1st. Get on in. One more time. Mm, the Go. I was about to say terrain new. All right. Let's just dump this.